And everybody, it's Tim Razor with regards to management just before 3.30 here on a Wednesday night. So very quickly, stock numbers, market lowers before, 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 before you, you and I begin our sojourn into tonight's markets. A couple things I want to talk to you about. Uh, one, we're going to talk about FOMC coming up, jobs report, quarter and rebalancing. Is there going to be a big surge rally tomorrow in Tesla, perhaps? I'll give you the lowdown on that. Um, but real quick, the podcast. So uh, the podcast, ever since we've updated the site, we have an app that pushes our podcast to the Apple iTunes store, the Google, Google Play store. And we can't figure out why that link is broken. That link is broken though. And uh, we, a couple of you have written and saying, hey, I don't get the podcasts aren't downloaded on Agile like they normally do. I'm going to tell you that they are though, they are, we're still doing them. Like someone said, hey, you guys still doing the podcast? Yes, we are. Just go to revereasset.com, select tomorrow's insights, choose the podcast button right there. And then you can just click to watch this video. And then if you're on your mobile device, you can actually listen to the podcast with your phone screen locked uh, by just playing the video. And so um, we have it set up like that. If you have any questions about that, uh, you can call 855-REAL-WEALTH uh, and we'll get you hooked up with that. But podcast is still available. You can still listen with your phone uh, with the screen locked. You don't have to keep your phone screen on per se or your tablet on per se uh, to listen to. So kind of just like a podcast. Um, just a different way to get to it until we can get that link fixed. And we are working, of course, to get that link fixed. Any questions about us or the strategies to which we employ here at the shop, look, you can uh, just click about strategy, about, about strategy, see the different portfolios to which we run. And then look, talk to America's fiduciary right here. I talked to Don and Hunter. Don and Hunter, the, person, the people making decisions for all the portfolios, what goes in, what goes out, what's on the watch list. And if you want to talk to them, you absolutely positively can. And like I said, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, take umbrage with anything that I'm saying, just hit the, you email me, timreverasset.com. Hit the contact page here. If you're on a mobile device, just call. Call and talk to Danny. He's the uh, greatest interpreter known to man or woman. And then, um, look, uh, one way to really just get a hold of me super easy is Twitter. I have a ton of people uh, over the years that have found me on Twitter. You, just like you stock nerds. And... Uh, what you all do is you go to, where's, oh, here it is, at TJ Razor. Um, that's how you find me, and there's a message in there right now. And so I have traders and uh, uh, investors just like you back channel messaging me on Twitter all the time. And you're just asking simple questions. Twitter's so much quicker than email. Just trust me on that. And so with that, these videos, stock numbers, market numbers are for what? Your edification purposes only. They're never to be misconstrued by someone by somebody's office. All you have to do is give us a call. Okay. With that out of the way, and what I said there, if you're familiar with the videos, you know I just said if you want advice, need advice, seek advice, all you have to do is a call. Just don't ever construe what we're doing here as a personal advice to you because we don't know you and we don't know your situation. And so as a fiduciary, we need to know that information. Real simple. You know, do I want to start with the a little swoon here or do I want to start? I think I want to start here. Uh, we talk about this in depth on the podcast. I'm just going to mention it here if it'll come up. Uh, where did the mouse go? There it is. So this is a big deal, and I don't know why the page isn't loaded. Let me see if I can reload this page. Look at these splits. The computer froze there for a second. Um, FOMC meeting is um, in May, okay? So you can see this is the May 22 meeting. There is a 66% chance that they are going to raise 75 to 100, 75, three quarters of a percent to a percent. The min here, 50 to 75 is 33. So we're no longer in 0.25% bill. They're going to get aggressive. And it's thought to be that they're going to get aggressive the next two meetings. And is the market ready for that? Is, is it known? Well, if it's on the CME, FedWatch, totally sure it's known. Eh, it's to be debated if the market's actually ready for that or if the market can handle that or, it, you know, because as you start raising rates, the high the high multiple stocks tend to not do as well. And so, well, then, Tim, what gives with this amazing run that the markets have had? Well, it has to do with something called rebalancing. And it, the market's been a little oversold, I guess you could say, too. But uh, rebalancing is super interesting. And there's a lot written on rebalancing. Um, but if you want to know a little bit more, this FT article is super good. Uh, surge in end of quarter rallies driven by funds research suggests, right? If you want to read about rebalancing, this is a great article. Uh, might be a little dry, but it's still a great article. And so uh, just, just Google search literally this title, and this FT article will come up. And so 
all of this to me is super interesting because well, what was today? I mean, the market was you know doing fine. It had been up for so many days, and here we are at like 8:30. You know, the market's not down that much uh, overall. This is a five-minute chart you're looking at, and then we go from what 40, 46, 21, 46, 25 ish. Yeah, 46, 25 bill. Uh, we're like 45, 74. Like this, it, and and it was just selling off. Um, and what gives? And so there is about, and you can find the research out there, there's about 10 as of today or the beginning of this week, 10 to 15 billion uh, dollars uh, worth of stock to rebalance yet in the markets. And I would find the link for you to that, but I read it earlier this week and I was having trouble finding it. There's still money to be rebalanced. And what does that mean? That um, their funds are still cleaning up. And clearly uh that that was selling that they were doing today in the rebalancing and so you know just like there's a market on close order um you know i don't know if you're familiar with it but every day around 230 maybe 240 comes out like market on close is it to buy is it to sell how much how much do the passive funds have to buy and have to sell because they do it towards the end of the day that's a number that comes out and um well this 10 to 15 is to sell right and so were they just getting it out of the way today and not tomorrow are they going to continue it tomorrow the market's fit is super interesting because the right up to 46, I mean, you came down 45.74 here, you can see it, and you close up uh, 25 points uh, from 14.30 up to 4,600, big round number. And where does that leave markets and what what are we to expect tomorrow? Well, of course, it's a market that can happen. This market's been tremendous off the bottom. This is a big time rally, right? But you know that. So how about we look at this on an HR chart? We're at two ATR. Could we go to three ATR? Listen, it's a market. Anything can happen. I don't know if we get to three ATR. And by the way, if you're not familiar with my ATR work, just email me to regressat.com. I'm more than happy to share it with you and what it represents. But right here, this is, you know, you can make a good penny buying at the mean, selling at two ATR. It's a business, right? You can do it uh, over and over again, a repeatable pattern. But are we going to go higher? And I'm not necessarily sure we're going to go higher. There's some certain pockets I really want to point out to you here in, in about two minutes. But uh, if I look a little bit lower, like like a four-hour chart, what am I saying? This isn't too bad. This is, um, other than that sell-off today, I found support at the four-hour 21. Like you see these consolidations and you move higher. This is another consolidation. Uh, we're looking at the continuous contract here. Like this is a consolidation, move higher, consolidation. Like, well, it kind of went lower until it, you know, reconsolidated. Behind. That's that's kind of what you want to see. The, it, it's going up, catching its breath, and then potentially going up again. That 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 to me doesn't look bearish. Although I think the market has the potential to kind of be down here rebalancing. And uh, do we rally Thursday, Friday, and then roll over on Monday? I, I don't know. You know, it's an interesting mix here because you have uh, rebalancing coming to a close on tomorrow. Then the first day, first two day trading days of the month are pretty big as mutual funds, pension funds, hedge funds come into the market. So tomorrow is going to be a fascinating day to watch unfold and where you have the machines actively, uh, the algorithms actively engaged, and then you have all this forced buying and selling being done by funds that have to get into their own compliance regulations. And so, um, you know, <laughs> As I say, it's a market and anything can happen. But look at this. This is a four-hour chart of the NASDAQ. That's not so bad, right? Uh, is it has been, all these markets off the lows are a little bit extended. You know, is this, you need to hold the 200 day here, right? Um, same chart. You're at the plus two ATR. You know, if I just put here the Dow futures in here, I mean, we're, we're pretty much, well, Dow's a little bit less on the ATR scale. And then here's the RTY. So I don't think the story is so much, I mean, if the indices puke, yeah, then then you know, 70, 80 percent of the market's going to puke as well. If the indices just hold their own, they don't have to surge higher. There's pockets I'm seeing of strength, and you're like, well, Tim, what are you talking about? There's been a lot of pockets of strength, especially in some of the beaten down tech names. But you know, it's just, do, is that where you want to allocate your thought process to right now? Uh, like, let's look at Amazon here. Um, you know, and Amazon's had this amazing rally right and it's maybe this is maybe this was the low for the year and then it starts building up around the 200 day uh but i see that chart and i'm like is that the best place to be um in terms of oops 
is Amazon the best place to be? You know, let me just readjust the chart. Or is the chart of Tesla where to be? And Tesla's had this amazing move. And you're like, well, what's so different about Amazon chart and the Tesla chart? Tesla has a catalyst coming up. And that's uh, on Saturday morning, uh, you'll get uh, quarterly uh, deliverables. Okay, so is Tesla going to surge on that next week or into the end of the week on that number? And I'm very interested to see that uh, uh, be, that question be answered because why why would I want to see that question be answered? Because Tesla is the tenth, I believe, the tenth highest rated stock in the S and P. So you know, like one, two, like Tesla has a huge pool in both the Nasdaq and in the S and P 500, and so it's going to have an effect. Now, if the whole market's selling off and Tesla's like the one shining star, that it won't matter. But Tesla could throw its weight around and uh, it could it could have a positive or, you know, potentially a negative effect. And so I like this chart, though. And you're like, Tim, what's the like about this chart? On the ATR chart, you're at three ATR. You're, you always tell us that that's extended. And I'm like, look, there's always uh, different circumstances, right? or jazz to be played between the notes. Like when you come back here to October of last year, and you're like, well, there's three ATR. Are we in a situation uh, like this? Well, I don't know, but I do know that I like what's under the hood here. And so when I see uh, this four hour chart of Tesla, this is a bullish consolidation and I like it. And so that's, you know, he, I just highlighted them earlier. You get this, you know, four hour consolidation gap now you have another four hour consolidation could it all fall apart yes it's a market i mean i i, I can't stress this enough you don't want to get you know a, a strong conviction strong convictions loosely held i guess is the best way to phrase it right and so um i've seen this pattern so many times before this is a bullish pattern now whether it plays out bullishly is a different story but look at this hourly pattern in tesla that is beautiful and so uh, and you can see it's just vacillating here, just trading in the range, trading in the range, trading in the range, range. And it's got a catalyst. Uh, are they going to run it up to, and my target's up here. I've got it on the chart, drawn in already. About 11.50, right? So can this, can this uh, get up to 11.50? Perhaps. Um, in the right environment. If tomorrow's, a, you know, as they say, proverbial uh, blank show, then no. And probably, probably not, you know, and just see here. Yeah, look at that. Uh, one, you know, just recent high here, kind of this low point of this consol this hourly consolidation over here. And they just coincide. So, I mean, you get, you know, 1150 then potentially sets the stage um, if those numbers uh, bear out well for a move on Monday, a continuation move Monday, potentially all the way up to. 1200 we'll see right like first steps first can the market get out of its own way uh after today's pause and you know <laughs> yeah you know, could always tweet and so but that is a setup that i've seen uh that i really like and i'd be remiss if i did not bring it to you so that is tesla and then i'm gonna show you the other thing i like here i like gold and i like oil I mean, like, well, everybody likes gold, everybody likes oil. Yeah, but I mean, there's been some really big, shiny uh, tech stocks rallying really nicely. And gold's had this pullback. And we talked about this. This is just one big consolidation. And so I dig it. Um, gold had every opportunity to just sell, I mean, just really sell the blank off yesterday. Well, let me get this back. Let me put it on a 30 minute chart, gold futures chart. Let me see if I can. Yeah, here you go. 1967 last week, all the way down eight, it shakes out all the week holders. And this is a really nice recovery here. And we go back to the daily chart. Um, you're just you're just marking time here. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that setup. It, it, I don't think it's as pretty on smaller time frames as Tesla is right now, but I like that. I like that chart and uh, look to see if it can come revisit uh, recent, recent highs. And we'll do oil here real quick. So oil's interesting to me, um, you know, peace in our time, right? A little, little, little Chamberlain reference there. Is that is that what's happening with uh, Ukraine and Russia? A little Neville Chamberlain. Um, if you know your history, that's not a good thing um, per se. 
um, per se. It's not a good thing at all. So um, this is, you You clear this, what, what level is it? I've got uh, my interface, the how we recorded the software is blocking price. So you get past 112. Uh, yeah, you're going to come back up here 125-ish. So I dig it. I think I think oil. Let's look at oil under the hood here a little bit. Let's go down four-hour chart. Yeah, not. I'm telling you, one of the prettiest. I mean, there's other great setups. I know you probably have a million of them, but 30 minutes not too bad. These are the charts here. I, you know, you don't buy an extended. Um, they've come back. They've held support, and now where do they go from here? And so let's take a look. Like. And talks about it. What, what's Apple doing here at it? Apple daily yeah, chart. We'll take a look at this and maybe more. So yeah, Apple like right right back up to highs. Is this all it has? Is this where you want to initiate your position? And Apple thinking that uh, it could break through this big level or is this enough drawing on my chart and, and keep going? Or um, now let's take a look at it under the hood. Go four hour. Uh, that's not too bad, actually. Um, it might just be marking time until the rest of the market, if the rest of the market pulls back. Uh, 30 minutes, let me go hour. I had, I had um, there we go. Yeah, I should, still not as pretty as Tesla. I tell you, Tesla, it's one of the prettier uh, setups I've seen. So we'll, this is what I think happens tomorrow. I think there's a really good chance S&P is rallying. I don't, I'm not... The market had every opportunity to just sell off today. I mean, just throw in the towel, capitulate. And once the rebalancing was done, it, it I mean, this looks bad on the small time frames. It buoyed right back up to 4,600. And you can see there's just not that much. I mean, if I show you that chart, you're like, Tim, well, well, why are you even talking about selling off? Like, look at these bullish time frames. And so that's what I mean. I don't think this is done. I think there's a really good chance you maybe rally tomorrow, potentially end a quarter, pull back at the end of the day. Friday, I think, could be a rally day. Then Monday is uh, where the bears uh, potentially come back out of hibernation. So with that, I hope it helps. I have a bunch of notes written in front of me. I think I covered everything um, I wanted to by memory. If I missed anything and I'm going through my notes, look, you can find it. I'm, I cover when I miss things in my notes, uh, I make it a point and go right back to the podcast and I cover them. So uh, a lot more on interest rates and what I what I foresee coming uh, with those big hikes. Danny has a lot to say on that as well. I think you're going to really enjoy this current, excuse me, that's not the tab, this current week's podcast. And so you'll notice this current week's because it's episode 393, that's right, 393 episodes later. I'm Danny and I now, uh, Hunter and Don uh, in the mix. So Don's been there for a lot of those too. Um, and then I'll, if I missed anything in my notes, I will have it for you this coming Friday. That's when we tape the podcast. We release it right away. You can find it on the website first, and then we send it out Saturday morning. So with that, I hope it helps, Stockners. Love you. Uh, thank you for all your support over the years, and I will see you at the next update.